The big moment has come to see if my plumbing has been glued together correctly. All this water is water that will just fill the, uh, all the aquariums back up by about two centimetres and will sit in all the plumbing. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part two of connecting my brand new five foot aquariums up from this side of the fish room to the sump system on this side of the fish room. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I do suggest you watch that video first, but if you are good to go, let's get into this week's video. Now, the big moment has come to turn the pump on and see if uh, the pump works, obviously, and to see if my plumbing has been glued together correctly. And I'm pretty hopeful that it has, but this is a big test, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. Uh, if it's leaking, well, I'm gonna have to redo those joins, have to cut out PVC and redo them. Now, again, this is a temporary measure. Uh, they will be eventually, uh, will eventually redo the plumbing on these five foot tanks to connect them to these other tanks that you see here. So that will all be connected on the sump system eventually over the next few months once I do drill these tanks. They're not drilled yet. So a lot of work involved there, but for the time being, so I can get these tanks up and running and put fish in them, this is the temporary measure. So um, just get it done plumbing. <laughs> so everything's connected up. All I need to do is flick a switch under here and you cannot see that but I'll flick the switch on and this pump should come to life there we go so it's going to ramp up with power water is flowing through and into the tank now this is the flow Got a lot of flow there and the pump is operating at its max so let's turn down the pump because I don't want that much flow in the aquarium. Okay, water's starting to go over the bulkhead in the top tank, flowing down this clear vinyl tubing and filling up the middle tank. So let's see how much I've turned the flow down by. You see the flow's turned down a lot. So this tank is filling up slowly, you can see. Not a massive amount of water going through. There is no pressure on, these system, on this system. This is a drainage system. The drainage system has multiple joins in it. So there's the max depth of that top five footer. Water's comfortably flowing through the bulkhead into this tank. And now this tank is filling up with water. Now the thing I need to watch out for is the sump. Obviously water's draining out of the sump and I don't want to drain too much water out of the sump to fill these tanks up. So I might have to fill the sump up with, with some water to counter the amount of water that's going through the plumbing and filling up these tanks. So water isn't flowing over the bulkhead yet, but it's getting there. Good test. What I might do is turn my other pumps into feed mode so I get more water flowing to this system uh, without uh, draining too much water out of the sump. Because I really just want to test the plumbing. So those pumps will stay in feed mode for 10 minutes. So water's now flowing into the plumbing. And it should be going through this system all the way to here. Has it started coming out? You can see the end of the elbow there. You should see water coming out of this very soon. There we go, water's flowing out, finally, <laughs> awesome, okay, so that will pick up some speed eventually, once the system reaches equilibrium, there we go, so thankfully I'm not noticing any leaks in the system, so it looks like I've done the plumbing well, brilliant. As simple as that. What I'll do is I'll turn the, I should have turned the uh, flash on so you can see a little bit better. And I just don't want to get too many reflections for you guys. So there we go. The reason why I didn't have the lights on this tank 
on these tanks yet is because I don't have the lids made up yet and I wasn't sure how much splashing there will be from water going into the tanks to fill them up. But there you go, the tanks have reached an equilibrium. Water is flowing over the bulkhead of the top tank, traveling down this clear vinyl hose. That's just held in with friction, guys, okay? So just held in with friction on this PVC pipe. Flows down into the middle tank, filling up this tank, and then it flows down into the bulkhead. Now ideally, again, I would have this line over this side so water does flow in through the aquarium and then down the bulkhead rather than being right next to it. Uh, however, for simplicity, again, this is a temporary measure, guys. I've done it this way. And that's why there's an internal power filter in this tank to flow the water through the aquarium to give it a chance to go into the aquarium before it goes down the bulkhead. Goes down this PVC pipe Runs down this length of PVC pipe, goes down here to this elbow. Happy days, very good, very good. No leaks, nothing. And water is flowing out, as you can see. Beautiful stuff. Very happy. It's worked. <laughs> so, that, that's the max the tank will fill up to. The system's reached an equilibrium. You can see the bulkhead there. Hopefully you can. How much water's going down? It's only half full. So there's a lot of uh, wiggle room here with this system. If I move this, you can see how much water's flowing out. That's the speed, not much at all. Again, you can see the water flowing down this pipe. This is all PVC cemented together. Uh, this is just held in place with friction alone. I could put a metal uh, tie clamp on here, but there's no point, it is so tight there. It's not gonna come off. And there we go, guys, the, the circuit is complete. Very happy with the result. I'm just glad it, it, that it's working. Uh, so these two tanks are now connected to the other side of the fish room and that's some. Anyway, I need to top up the sump with some water and um, then test it for uh, if there is a power outage how much water is going to go into this sump because water will backflow into the sump from all the tanks because I've added two new tanks to the system and I need to work out how much water will flow back into the sump and I don't want to fill the sump up too much and cause it to overflow in the event of a blackout so I've got to test that now okay guys so the pumps have been off for a number of minutes now and water has completely flowed out all the plumbing. So the sump is as full as it will ever get. And you can see how much wiggle room I have left in the sump. So now that all the water has flowed back out of the plumbing from all the aquariums, it's finished flowing from the bulkheads down all the plumbing. There's no more water flowing to the sump. I know how much water I can fill this sump by. So this is what the sump will look like in the event of a blackout. No more water will flow back into this sump. And now, with, this, with all the pumps off, I can safely fill this uh, sump, say to about here, with my water change water. So I'll fill it to here, and then I'll turn the pumps back on, and I'll see how low the water level then goes, and I'll know if I'm running out of water in the sump. Hopefully I'm not. Because uh, I don't want to, you know, completely drain the sump. So there's a fine line with the sump system. You want to have just the right amount of water in it. You don't want to have too little, otherwise your pumps will run dry. They do have a safety feature in place. If the pumps detect no water for two minutes, they shut off automatically. But I don't want to get to that point, obviously. So if I fill up this sump with too much water while the system's running and I fill it up to a level that it looks suitable while the system's running and then power cuts, it can potentially overflow in the sump as all the water backflows from all the plumbing, from all the bulkheads. So normally, with, say with this four by two by two foot tank, you see how much water uh, the water level's at right now. But when the tank is in operation, you can see where the water level is. It sits about two centimeters higher than its current position. And that's a lot of volume of water from every single tank. So, you need check valves, check valves are imperative. 
uh, in a system like this to prevent too much water backflowing uh, through the return lines as well. So all the water that uh, runs through the sump system to the sump in the event of a blackout is just coming from the drain lines, not the return lines, because the return lines shut with these check valves. We got the sump as full as it will ever get during a blackout, and you can see how much uh, space we've got left here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, while the sump is turned off, I'm gonna fill it up to about here, and then we'll turn the pumps all on. All three pumps will turn on, and we'll watch how much the water level goes down to in the sump. And hopefully it won't go down too far, and I've filled it up just enough. So let's do that now. Got the water change hose clamped down to the edge of the sump. Runs all the way along to one of my water change drums. Flip the switch. The water starts flowing through my water change hose and into the sump. Now we're going to closely monitor this. I want to fill it up to about here. So I'm just going to watch the sump fill up with water. Once it fills up to that point, I'll shut the water change pump off and I'll know I've filled up enough water in the system. I could technically fill it up to here or even to here if I really wanted to push the limit, right? But I don't want to go that high. That's just going to be silly. So I'm going to fill it to here and that should really be enough water to run the entire system. Then we'll turn all three pumps on and we'll see how much water drains into the plumbing from the sump. It will fill up the tanks, it will fill up the plumbing, and then it will reach an equilibrium, and I'll know how much water I need to add with each water change. So at the moment, I've got my fill line as above this uh, piece of electrical, white electrical tape. That's where I normally fill my tanks to. But because I've got more tanks now, I might have to increase this height so the new plumbing and the new tanks are able to be filled up to their proper levels. So I have to add more water to this system now, just so I can fill in, fill all the plumbing with water and fill these tanks up with water. I actually need more water in the system. Water is increasing in the sump now. All I've got on is the water change pump. Water's flowing into the system. All the pumps are off. There's no water in the plumbing at the moment. This is where all the plumbing dumps water back into the sump. And you can see that's the new uh, plumbing from the two five foot aquariums. That's where water flows out of into the sump. Water is all churning away from the drain lines of all the tanks. So you can see there's no uh, water draining into the sump at the moment because all the pumps are off. So the sump is filling up. And I just want to fill it to this point here. So once it reaches this point, I still have that much wiggle room for the entire system. Uh, if I do need to add more water, I don't think I will have to, but uh, we'll fill it up to this point here. So I've got about two centimeters left to fill to in the sump, and then I'll turn my water change water pump off, disconnect the hose, everything, and then we'll turn on all three pumps then see the water level drain out of the sump as all the tanks fill up with water. All the plumbing will fill up with water from the sump system so the water will then drain down and we'll see what its new equilibrium point is. And then I'll know how much water to pop into my system when I do water changes. I'll have to change this level, this fill line level, and then I'll know that is where I can fill my sump to and I'll know if there was to be a blackout, it won't overflow because it's just enough water in there. There's enough water so the sump won't drain and uh, on the other side there isn't too much water in the system where in the event of a blackout the sump floods. So this is the whole point of this test. So we're almost at that point right here. Doesn't matter if we go over too much. I just wanted to have enough water in the system that when all three pumps are turned on the sump doesn't completely drain out. So I need all this water. All this water is water that will just fill the uh, all the aquariums back up by about two centimeters and we'll sit in all the plumbing. But anyway, that's the level I wanted at. So let's turn the water change pump off. You can see how much water it's drained from my 
Water change drum, not too much. Final hose disconnected. I'm gonna turn all three pumps on. So, let's do it. Still have to label my plug here. This plug is for the two five footers. So let's focus. That one's on. That one's on. The water's now flowing through the plumbing. We've got all the pumps on. They return to their normal wattage, what they were running at previously. And now water is draining from the sump. So the sump was filled to here. Okay. Let's see how much water drains out of the sump until all the aquariums in the fish room fill and we're each in equilibrium. So previously, the top of this piece of electrical tape was my fill line. So it's already dropped that much and water isn't flowing out of the tanks yet. I mean, it's just slowly starting now. You can see some bubbles coming out but that will increase over time. As the tanks fill up with more and more water, more water will drain into the sump. So you can see, that much water has already drained out of the sump and into the plumbing and into the aquariums. So it's continuing to go down. Let's see how fast it's draining out of the sump. And hopefully, we have filled up enough water in the system without it draining completely to fill all the tanks and the plumbing. So this was my previous fill line. I'm starting to get there. We've drained that much so far in two minutes. You can see water is now starting to flow back into the sump from the plumbing, but it hasn't reached its full peak. It will increase in volume. Okay, let's look at the new system. Water's flowing in. Going down the bulkhead and into the other five footer. Filling this one up as well. Going over the bulkhead, through all the plumbing, around the fish room floor, up and over. And as you can see, water's going into the sump. Let's have a look at where we are. The sump is still draining. And my previous fill line was here. So far we've been filling up for just over three minutes. About three and a half minutes now. You can see how much water we've drained out of the system. I filled it to here with all the, with all the pumps off. And how much water has exited the sump. How much water has gone out of the sump and into the plumbing. So all that water is filling all the plumbing up at the back of these aquariums and filling up the tanks so all the water will flow out of the bulkheads and return back to the sump. So It will reach an equilibrium at some point. What that point is, I currently don't know. And that's because we've hooked up two brand new five foot aquariums to the system. And they have to reach their own equilibrium, their own balancing point, their own point of where water will flow in and out of this aquarium at the same rate. They seem to have reached that equilibrium point now on this side of the fish room. You can see the wattages that I'm running in at. 35 watts for each of these pumps, not a lot of power. So 70 watts of power to filter 20 aquariums on this side of the fish room. One of the massive benefits of running a sump system. Save on some electricity for your filtration and your heating. And for the two five footers, I'm only running the pump at 18 watts. It has a maximum output of 65 watts. So that's pretty good. Not a lot of electricity used to power these aquariums with filtration. And there's where the water line is right now. 
the water exiting the sump has slowed and we might be at an equilibrium point now. I can hardly see it going down if it is going down at all. But we may have reached the point where we've got enough water in the system now to not overflow the sump if there was a blackout and to not completely drain the sump yet fill all the tanks up with water and fill all the plumbing up with water. So that's pretty much spot on. As you can see, we're a little bit below the fill line, not a massive drama at all. I sometimes let the, the sump uh, evaporate to about this point and then fill it up with fresh water with no Tanganyika buffer in it, of course. Water's now pretty much filled up the tanks to their normal operating level. The entire plumbing system is now full of water as well. And this is pretty much where the sump will drain to. When I first turned this, the new pump on, I wasn't sure how much water was gonna drain out of the system to fill up the new plumbing and to fill up the two five foot aquariums over the bulkhead. And that's why I done that test with all the pumps off. I wanted to see how much backflow we'd get. And it filled up to about here. I then was able to gauge how much water I needed just to add into the system. Just as a test, I added to here, new water in the sump, while all the pumps were off. That way I know in the event of a blackout, the sump will only fill up to this point with this amount remaining, of tank space remaining. Now I know if I do have a blackout, the, tank will, the sump will only ever fill to this point. And once the power returns, if I'm not home at the time, the sump will only drain to this point. Perfect test system is running. There are no leaks, happy days. Guess what guys, I can now put fish in my two brand new five foot aquariums. So there you have it guys, connecting the five foot aquariums up to the sump system. And now they're ready to stock full of fish. I really hope you enjoyed this little series and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.